Hello and welcome to that weird review of Transformers Generations uh, War for Cybertron slash Fall of Cybertron slash uh, Rise of the Dark Spark Megatron Deluxe Class. So here is your main bad guy in the first two Transformers Cybertron video games War of and uh, War 4 and Fall of in his robot mode and I really love this robot design it looks powerful he definitely looks like a leader and he looks like he he looks like he's based off G1 Megatron with the bucket helmet obviously his uh, overcompensatory weapon and the overall paint scheme lends mostly to uh, Generation Megatron. Yeah. So, uh, taking a look at details more closely, you will see I will take off the big old fusion cannon. Nice paint on it. Nice, nice amount of molding. This little secondary thing here. Trigger up here. You got some nice red paint over it and whatever this is molded to be pegs on the underside for robot mode and vehicle mode and it does fire a missile so on screen there you go fires a nice trans clearance purple missile uh, loading it back in there. Okay, and look at the inside. I find this thing is more trig uh, more of a hair trigger than even Universe Galvatron. So that says a lot. I can just drop it and it'll fire. <laughs> but this is big and awesome and. It's what Megatron always needs. Putting it back. As you can see, I'm going to fire it every time I touch it. Putting it back in. And talking about the robot. Nice robot mode. I do have to say, again, I really do like this robot design. It's my favorite of the current Megatrons out there. Even though he's a couple years old now. He still beats any of the Deluxe Megatrons. So, checking out the head sculpt. Very nice head sculpt. You got a small... It's not a Decepticon symbol on his head, but he does have a little thing of black on his head. He has a light piping chunk, but the painted over eyes deny piping, which is unfortunate, but they are in a nice shade of red, along with his arms... Uh, I guess this arm, his torso, and right there. I like the asymmetry of him, even though I have no idea what this piece is for. I mean, it doesn't really do anything in robot mode, and it doesn't really do anything in vehicle mode either. I guess it's similar to the piece on, hey, Universe Galvatron had something here as well. You know, nice big old Decepticon. Uh, symbol right there. Purple on black always makes this little purple pop even more. Nice transparent purple on his torso plate. Nice amount of red on the hips. You got a little bits of purple uh, breaking up the mostly white and black design. Even some transparent purple here on uh, what I suppose is the knee joint. Nice molding on the toe. And you got some red paint on the bottom of the foot. He has no problem standing. I mean, look at his gargantuan clown shoes. He has no problem standing. Now, articulation on this guy. Uh, he has a ball jointed neck. He can look down a bit for transformation. He can't really look back due to the... Uh, molded panel right here, which is, I guess, molded to look like thrusters? 
I assume. That could also be a face right there. Uh, unfortunately, it's a bit hollow here, but that's due to transformation. I can overlook that. Getting back to posability. Yeah, his head's on a ball joint. This little panel here is on a transformation joint. So, it, uh, it's on a double hinge. There we go. Double hinge. Pegs in nicely. Shoulders are on a hinge joint and a full rotation. They can the shoulder piece can move up for transformation. Uh, you've got an elbow joint with a nice range of motion on it. Bit of invisible uh, floating elbow syndrome. Oh, nothing at the hand, but he does have a, a, a biceps level. But there's a reason why there's nothing at his hand. Same over here. Hips. They look like they're ratcheted, but they're not. Which is unfortunate. Uh, nice range of motion. You can go for some pretty high kicks. Nice forward up, forwards, bend, and backwards. About that far. He's got a big range on the knee. Do transformation. Nothing at the thigh here, but he does have a knee swivel. And another transformation joint for the toe. So, possibility, not bad. He definitely, he can definitely look like, uh, like he's leading people, like he's threatening them. Oh yeah, you also get instructions. I didn't get the box. Now, you may be wondering why I started in robot mode. Well, it's the simple reason of his old mode has a fire truck going by. and an ambulance I hope you heard that uh, getting back to what I was talking about his alt mode has two different variants to it which is a slight aesthetic change but it's enough to warrant doing it last so I can show them both and give them their own little amounts of time so here we're going to start by removing the gun common amongst Megatrons. Fold down uh, this panel like so. Fold up the foot. And I guess leave the legs for now. Now we can come to the arms. You're going to want to take this. It's on a double hinge. And a, no, not a ball joint, but it's on a swivel. And just uh, leave it up in that configuration. And then take this chest panel fold it down over his crotch and then that reveals the hole where his head goes So Megatron's uh, staring at himself this seems a lot like Prime Megatron to me where he just his head would be sticking out peering at things uh, uh, that's common from most Megatron take the back panel at least current Megatron. Oh, before I do this, before, 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 I forgot something. I forgot something. I forgot. How silly of me. I forgot size comparisons. Excuse me, I'm a bad toy reviewer. At least today. So, taking the missile, putting it back in. Uh, on video game characters, here, for comparison, you have Skywarp, or just the Seeker mold. And you can see he's a bit taller. He's a slightly taller, which is good, because in uh, Generation 1, Megatron was always a bit taller than Starscream, so it's nice to have these guys almost in scale. And then, just for the hacks of it, here he is with Jazz. 
getting Skyward out of the way. Damn. Didn't work. Let me try that again. Not working. Mm. That worked. And for other Megatron comparisons, here we have the uh, recent generations uh, re really or uh, update of a Megatron. And you can see War for Cybertron Megatron is quite a bit taller than Generations Megatron. Uh yeah. And then of course we have Generations Voyager Galvatron. So you there you can see your three most recent Megatron molds all together. Which looks really cool. I really do like the difference of these guys. They each have different aesthetics and that's what I like in my collecting. Now Megatron, as I'm pretty sure most of you know the character, I don't need to go in it, but he is one of the few characters that I actually have the desire to collect more of. Hence why I have this one, the Galvatron, the uh, two of the Generations most recent mold. So, yeah, I do like me some main villains. Now we will get to transformation. So, again, do all the steps I had mentioned previously. Get this to here. This pegs in nicely. And then come to the arms. You're going to want to split it in half. So it looks like this. And fold the hand back in. And then you can take it and fold it out on that hinge. Yeah, I mentioned he had an elbow joint. He has a swivel there as well. It's for more for transformation. Unpeg the back. And make sure it's extended on this double hinge as far as it can go. And raise up the shoulder. Let me see if I can get this properly. This is my, this is my uh, least favorite part of the transformation. Oh, there it is. There we go. That. So you have him up like that. Second verse, same as the first. Open the hand. Full, close it, or fold it in on itself, rotate, rotate up, and let's see if this one will click in the pa place as well. This normally is my least favorite point of transformation on this guy because he's just because they don't click in the place very well. So there you have that. Now you're going to take this piece, do that so it sits in there. Uh, however, you have the tank treads is your choice. Now come to the legs. Fold the legs up, and you can see there's a peg right there, and a hole right there, a screw hole, but still, peg it in, and hope it just stays there. Again, second verse, oddly, same as the first. And just peg it in like so, it doesn't like to stay. Keep these folded up. Fold it back, and come take the gun chunk, and you see this hole here goes into this peg here, and if I did this correctly, it should stay there, yes, here it is. Here is Megatron in his tank mode, and uh, it's alright, it's a tank, I guess it has tracks and a huge weapon on top. 
Now, the thing about the mo not the movie, the War for Cybertron slash Fall of Cybertron to uh, games, I should say, I'm fumbling my words, I apologize. Thing about the game, and the characters in the game, is that they had multiple forms of their alt mode. Like, you could, uh, you had one base mode, which was the hovering mode for the vehicle, for every character. Even the jets had, the seekers had two different molds, or forms, should I say. And then you had a speed mode, which you could achieve by, like, going really fast, or, like, pressing a button on the game, whichever version of it you had. So, what I find is most of the movie, uh, again, I'm going to keep saying movie, damn it, most of the video game characters can only seem to have one of those modes. So, if it's, say, Jazz down here, he has the, his alt mode is the speed version. He doesn't have the regular, just driving version. Now, what I like particularly about Megatron is you can recreate the hover mode that's seen in the game. Now, I'm pretty sure there's more aesthetic changes in the video game than what you're about to do here, but at least you can do this. So, take these, fold them back down, and then fold them in on themselves. Like that. And there you have your ho your uh, hovering weapon mode. I guess you can call it. It's not really a tank anymore. Which doesn't look any different, but hey, at least you can do it. And you can still fire. So... I like that they m thought to engineer that. That's what I like in something like a Transformer, where the thought went in to engineer everything that the character has done in either a video game or a television show. So, here you go. And uh, I'm going to do a size comparison in one second. Okay, now for comparison, you can see uh, Megatron here back in his tank mode. We have him next to the Seeker mold. So you can see he's a lot wider and uh, quite a lot longer. Maybe that's due to the giant gun. And here just, again, for I guess shits and giggles, is Jazz. Uh, God, Jazz, what are you doing? What was I doing? Transforming you. So you can see just the three uh, false Cybertron guys I have. I could bring out Ultra Magnus, but it's not worth it. And for Megatrons, again, the current generations Megatron. So you can see kind of the evolution Megatron has taken. Because in uh, Generation 1 he was a gun, obviously. And then here again, Age of Extinction, Galvatron. So you can see Megatron's gone from a gun to a plane or a tank if you and tank he's been a tank he's been a jet he's been a plane and finally a truck so that's about wraps it up it's episode uh, 69 by the way if you couldn't read by the title so feel free to leave any inappropriate or dirty jokes in the comments below while you're liking the video, subscribing to my channel, checking me out on other media platforms, and with that, 
I say goodbye.